in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your own imagination. I would like to offer a few observations on the vagaries of the animal called man. Take the popular saying, seeing is believing. What idiot first said that? And how many idiots have repeated it since? Do you believe in love? Tell me the color of it. Do you believe in truth, goodness, mercy? What shapes do they come in? No, my friends. Seeing is not believing. Only believing is believing. And we'll prove it to you in the story that follows. The longer we're away from this earth, Alice, the less we rely on our senses. The senses, in a manner of speaking, start to fade little by little. They tell me this is quite normal. Actually, they tell me I'm a bit ahead of the game to be able to enjoy as much as I do. Charles, when you say they, they tell you this and they tell you that, you mean... I mean them, of course. All those. The ones up there? It isn't up there, Alice. And it isn't down there either. Well, where is it? It's simply there. Meaning, not here. I thought you knew that. Are there a lot of them? Of course there are a lot of them. What would you expect? Our mystery drama, The Ghost at the Gate was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Beatrice Strait. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. With how much ease believe we what we wish... An English playwright named Dryden wrote that in the year 1679. Brilliant man, Mr. Dryden. But wait. Listen to this. Men freely believe that which they desire. Someone else seems to have had the same idea. And he wasn't a 17th century English playwright. He was a Roman emperor named Julius Caesar proving once again that no man in any age has a monopoly on wisdom. Now, let's get on with our story. Come in, Dorothea. Your chocolate, Mrs. Emery. Oh, good. Uh, shall I light the fire in the fireplace? Yes, please. I think it's chilly enough for... Oh, Dorothea. Ma'am? You forgot the other cup again. I did. I told you to always bring two cups. Oh, it seems so silly. I'll decide what's silly. When there's just you to drink it. I've explained that to you, Dorothea, more than once. I like to drink two cups of chocolate before retiring. And I don't like that icky sediment in the bottom of the cup. Uh, I'll try, Mrs. Emery. Um, now, if that's all... Or, or do you want me to go downstairs and fetch up another cup? Oh, no, no. Go to bed. Oh, good night, Mrs. Emery. Good night, Dorothea. All right now, darling. Chocolate's all poured. Fire's lighted. Charles, everything's ready. Now, come on, darling, or the chocolate will get cold. Don't want any chocolate. Oh, Charles, you love chocolate. You always love chocolate. Tastes like mud. But it's very good chocolate. You know what good chocolate Dorothea makes. Now, come on, Charles. Don't make me wait. You want me? Want you? Oh, Charles, how can you ever ask such a thing? Why, I go through the whole day thinking of you. All afternoon at the community chest, I think about you. Why, darling, it's... It's torture for me listening to those other women whose husbands are... are with them in their conventional way. 
I want to scream at them, but I have my Charles, you silly females. Every night he comes to my bedroom and he, he's tall and handsome and brilliant and romantic and adorable and manly and, and we sit and talk together and he... All right, Alice. That's enough. <sighs> there you are. Oh, Charles. Missed me? Oh, darling, the days are so terrible. I can't think of anything but this moment when we're together. But you know that, my dear. I tell you every single night. I need to hear it, Alice. We who have more or less left this world can't come back unless we are wanted by someone who is still here. Wanted a lot. Otherwise, we can't make the trip, as it were. We can't even purchase a ticket, so to speak, unless we have a destination that is vibrant with love and need and desire. But I love you and I need you. I desire you. You should know that, Charles. Well, it doesn't hurt to hear it. <laughs> Here's your chocolate. Try it. I don't want it. Oh, Charles. The longer we're away from this earth, Alice, the less we rely on our senses. The senses, in a manner of speaking, start to... to fade. Mashed potatoes begin to taste like cold cream. Coffee tastes like iodine. And this chocolate tastes like mud. They tell me this is quite normal. Charles... When you say they, they tell you this and they tell you that, you mean... I mean them, of course. All those. The ones up there? It isn't up there, Alice. And it isn't down there, either. Well, where is it? It's simply there. Meaning not here. Heavens, I thought you knew that. Are there a lot of... Of them. Of course there are a lot of them. It's all so vast, so endless, and so damnably peaceful. I know what it is to be lonely, Charles. This big house, I couldn't bear to move out of it after you weren't here all the time, because I couldn't leave the place where you and I had spent so many happy years together. Why don't you ask someone to move in with you? Move in? Why, I, I never thought. Such a large house. You could have separate quarters. You wouldn't be forever bumping into each other. But who would want to move in? Who would I want to move in? Oh, some old good friend. Well, like who, Charles? Oh, someone like Connie, maybe. Connie Lawrence. Connie Lawrence? Well, I've certainly known her long enough. We were roommates at school. Well, do you think she'd want to? She'll jump at the chance, would be my guess. She still lives in that tiny one-room apartment. I, I know she's saving for her retirement. And with the pay school teachers get in this town. Charles, I'll call her tomorrow. She gets home from school at three. <laughs> Come in, Garfield. Your breakfast, Mrs. Emery. Thank you. Um, you don't want two cups in the morning, do you? Oh, no. Mm. No. Coffee doesn't leave that icky stuff the way chocolate does. Actually, I think I won't have chocolate at night anymore, Dorothea. I feel like trying something else. But two cups, just the same, don't forget. Yes, ma'am. Don't, don't go just yet, Dorothy. I want to talk to you about something. Sit down, won't you? Oh, y yes, ma'am. Dorothea, oh. do you find the work too hard in this big house? No, ma'am. Well, we used to have a houseman and an upstairs maid and a cook. Oh, I have no complaints, Mrs. Emery, if you don't. Oh, I don't. This is the only job I've ever had. I've worked here for 22 years. I was so fond of both you and, and Mr. Emery right from the start, and I still am of you, and... Well, goodness knows I practically worship this house. It's so beautiful. I love taking care of it, and I love living in it. Do you still have that little room on the third floor in the back? Oh, I love that little room, Mrs. Emery. I can look out and see the garden. I was thinking, why couldn't we give you all the other rooms as well? The rooms the other servants used to have. 
All of them? Well, why couldn't we knock out the partition between your room and what used to be the cook's room? I'd have... I'd have two windows. And make one of the other rooms into a really big dressing room. Oh. And maybe put in some kind of a kitchen for you with a hot plate and a refrigerator. Oh, Mrs. Emmy, I never thought I... I never imagined in my wildest dreams. No, no. <laughs> it's all settled. Oh. I'm going to stay right here in bed all morning and make plans. I don't know. How to thank you, Mrs. Emery. <laughs> Don't try. It's my pleasure. I just hope I deserve all the... Oh, before I forget, Dorothea. Oh, yes. Last night, while I was drinking your lovely chocolate, an idea came to me. You and I are, are rattling around in this big house. Oh, we certainly are. And I was wondering, well, how would it be if we invited Miss Lawrence to stay with us? Miss Constance Lawrence? Do you remember her? Isn't she the one who teaches school? Used to come to dinner once in a while. And after she'd help Mr. Emery with the double cross stick? <laughs> That's Connie. Oh. I thought we could open up the two big rooms on this floor in the back. In that way, she and I would have separate quarters and not be, you know, bumping into each other all the time. Of course, I, I imagine she'd expect to take care of her own room. Oh, I wouldn't mind. What's two more rooms? You wouldn't mind cooking for her? Oh, what's one more person to cook for? Nothing. Oh. Well, then, it's all settled. My goodness. The house will be kind of lively again. Almost like before. Not quite, of course, but... Well, you know what I mean. I know what you mean, Dorothea. <laughs> it will be uh, more lively. <laughs> Will you? Then I'll scratch your head for you. Oh, dear. You're just going to have to wait. I'm sorry, Goldie. Hello? Connie, this is Alice Emery. Alice, how are you? Long time no see. <laughs> well, I don't get out a great deal. Maybe we could have dinner some evening. Would you like to come here? Well, I, I thought you might like to come here. Well, if you'd rather... Heaven knows your dinners are better than mine. Connie, I want you to come here for good. I mean to live. To live? To live with you? Why not? We've known each other practically all our lives, and I've got this huge house. I've got Dorothea to look after us. You could have your own quarters overlooking the garden. We live quite independently since I'm in the front, and you're in school till three, and by the time you get home, I'll be at the community chest. We'll just meet for dinner. Maybe have a little nip together first. Oh, Connie, say you will. Oh, Alice, I don't know. I, I've i lived here for so long. That tiny little place? High time you got out of it. But I'm used to it. And then there's Goldie. You know, my canary. Bring Goldie with you. We'll find a nice sunny window. Alice, it's all very tempting, but... I don't know. Think about having two big rooms and vegetables out of the garden and being waited on. And Connie, think of the money you'll say. Well, yes, but all the same. You've just got to say yes, Connie. Take the afternoon to think about it and call me back. I will, Alice. I'll call you soon. Fine. Bye. Bye, Alice. Oh, dear. It all sounds so luxurious. Two rooms and fresh vegetables. And someone to cook for me. But I can't leave this little place. I can't give up my afternoons. Why, I couldn't live without my afternoons. I, I know this place is small and dark and furniture is dingy and the bathroom is old-fashioned. But we've never minded, have we, dearest? Have we? It's a very small place, Connie. But if I move into Alice's house, I might lose you forever. 
You might never come to visit me again, and all my lovely afternoons would be really over. You're not to worry, Connie. You mean we can go on as we always have? Only we'll have more room. Well, if you say so. Trust me, Connie. Oh, I do trust you, Charlie. Haven't I always trusted you? All these years. <laughs> flesh may be weak, but the spirit of Charles, or Charlie, is very, very willing. Also, very inventive, and very persuasive. Ah, well, there's nothing like the love of a good woman, unless it's the love of two good women. We'll come back in a bit for Act Two. we come back to our story. We seem to have uncovered a triangle here. Connie, Alice, and Charles. Or Charlie, as Connie calls him. And the apex of the triangle is naturally, if you will pardon my chauvinism, the man. Listen now to the second act of The Ghost at the Gate. What a lovely dinner that was, Alice. (laughs) Was it, Connie? It was the wine that made everything taste so good. Whatever gave you the idea of bringing home a bottle of wine? Alice, it's the first anniversary of me moving in here. Don't you realize? I've been here a month. Well, for heaven's sakes. Why, it seems like a week. Or it seems like you've always lived here. I don't know which. <laughs> it has worked out, hasn't it? Has it ever worked out? I was so afraid it wouldn't. You know what? It's meeting just for dinner that's done it. Leading separate lives except for dinner. Connie, let's have wine every night. This wine. What kind is it? I can't quite make out what the label says. Oh, it's in French. Oh, so never mind. It's got a picture of a house on it. If it's French, it's a chateau. I didn't know that. You're very clever, Alice. (laughs) Save the label and I'll order a case of it. Must be really nice to have money. I've always found it to be nice. I guess money is about the nicest thing in the world. Money isn't. Love is. Oh, yes. First comes love. Friends come second. Then money. How about friends who have money? (laughs) Oh, Connie, you're very witty tonight. So are you, Alice. (laughs) Witty and profound. (laughs) Seriously, though, Connie. You have been happy here, haven't you? Oh, Alice, my beautiful room, the marvelous food. Having Dorothy to make my bed and clean up, it's heavenly. (laughs) You're stuck with me. Oh, I am so glad, Connie. You can't imagine how glad. Is there any more of that wine? More than half a bottle. Oh, good. Let's... Mr. Emery. What? Oh, Dorothea. What is it? It's after nine o'clock, Mrs. Emery. You don't say. I was wondering, should I bring your clear consomme upstairs to you? What clear consomme? Well, Mrs. Emery, we talked about it last night. Remember when you decided to give up the chocolate, and then we tried apple juice and prune juice and lemonade, and last night you said clear consomme because it has a nice aroma? I did say that, didn't I? Uh Uh-huh. What time did you say it was? Quarter past nine. (gasps) My goodness. What's the matter, Alice? It's past time. Past my bedtime. You want the consomme? Oh, to heck with the consomme. I'll take the wine. You don't mind, do you, Connie? Why, no, Alice. Oh, let me have your glass, too, all right? Sure, Alice. I've got my glass, Connie. Forgive me for eating and running. Alice, it's your house. <laughs> I simply didn't realize the time. A quarter past nine. Heaven. She'd better not drink any more of that wine. She's not used to it. Neither am I. Only tonight we were celebrating my being here a month. Mm. Why did you want two glasses, Dorothea? Oh, she always wants two. Two cups, two bowls, two glasses. One of her little ways. But tonight she took my glass. Do you suppose she wants me to join her? I wouldn't know, Miss Lawrence. Maybe. 
Maybe she's always expected me to join her after dinner, only she didn't want to suggest it. When I moved in here, we agreed that we'd lead absolutely independent lives, not get in each other's way. We've been very careful about that, going to our separate rooms after dinner. <laughs> Maybe all this time she was hoping I'd stop by her room on my way to my room, and I never noticed Dorothy there. That must be it. I wouldn't really know. I never guessed. Oh, how self-centered. How insensitive. I'll never forgive myself. I'm going up there right now and apologize. Can I clear the table now? Do whatever you like. She's got to forgive me. That's all there is to it. Dear, sweet, generous Alice. She'll understand. She'll know I didn't mean to hurt her feelings. Alice? <laughs> May I come in? Come on, darling. Have some wine. Alice? <laughs> Connie and I had it for dinner, and we just loved it. Try it, Charles. Charles? Hmm. Not at all bad. Nice bouquet. Charlie! Charlie! Where did you come from, Connie? You never told me. How could you, Charlie? Charlie? Just give me a moment, and I'll explain everything. But I need a moment to think. Then I'll explain. What did you think of Charlie's explanation? I've heard it all before. How he needs lots of love to make the trip from there to here. He always needed a lot of love, even when he was just here. Well, he got a lot. Did he really spend all those afternoons with you? I mean, before he left here and went there? Five afternoons a week. Alice, do you hate me? I should. I know, but do you? I guess I do when it comes right down to it. I'll move out. I'll move back to my one room. But I don't want you to move out. Oh, we were having such a good time. Remember how we were laughing and carrying on at dinner? I haven't laughed like that in years and years. Could have been the wine. There's half a bottle left. Should we? Let's. You don't think we'll turn into a couple of alcoholics, do you? Not on half a bottle of wine. Light white wine. <laughs> well, here's to... To what? Here's to Charles. To Charlie. I feel as if I've just buried him. Say goodbye forever. Did he really come to see you five afternoons a week, Connie? At three o'clock. You see, my school and his bank let out at the same time. It was practically inevitable. Charlie was a no-good man. He still is. Only now he's a... A, a, a no-good ghost. Oh, Alice. <laughs> There's enough wine left for a glass apiece. Fill her up. Hold out your glass. All that guff about needing to be loved and wanted or he couldn't make the trip. Remember what we were saying at dinner, Connie, about love being the most important thing? I've always believed that. And friends being the second most important thing? Especially friends like you, Alice. And like you, Connie. I feel closer to you right now than I've ever felt to anybody. My mother, my father, my canary. You've been through a lot, Connie. Just in the last half hour. And yet we're still friends. Isn't that amazing? Truly remarkable. It must mean something. Something very profound. Like what? Like, well, like there are times in a person's life when love isn't the most important thing. Friends are. A friend is. Yes. Stupid ghost. Silly, pompous ghost. You believe in ghosts? Certainly not. Neither do I. Never have. Except Charlie, of course. Why should Charlie be an exception? He is for you too, Alice. You know he is. Tell me something. Why do you believe in him? Because... Why? I want to. That's why I believe in him too. Is that wrong? Not wrong, but you've got to stop, and I've got to stop. We can't have him visiting you in the back of the house from three to six and then coming to see me in the front of the house from nine to twelve. Now that we know, it wouldn't be nice. Well, we couldn't be friends anymore. Oh, Alice. But if we don't believe in him, if we don't, or don't desire him, 
then he'll have to go back there and stay there. He won't be able to come here anymore. He can't make the trip. Connie, can you do it? Stop wanting him? Yes. Of course I can. Why, I'm having a wonderful time. I don't need him. Neither do I. We'll be better off without him. We'll be free, Connie. Liberated women. Let's drink to that. Right you are. Bottoms up. <laughs> Courage lies in the bottom of a glass. Courage for the shy, the lonely, the frightened, the frustrated, and for the two elderly ladies determined to forget a ghost. We'll return shortly with Act Three. Alice and Connie are bravely resolved to forget the man both had loved so long. But what of him? Poor, lonely, unloved ghost. Doomed to live on forever in the there. Banished forever from the here. What of him? Connie. Connie, speak to me, Connie. That's my sweet Goldie. That's my lovely bird. Happy to see me, sweetheart? Connie, I know you're here. I'm here, Charlie, but you're not. I am so. I don't believe in you anymore. You do, too. And I don't love you or want you, so there. Connie, you are being very cruel. I expect I am. If you don't believe me, why are you talking to me? Don't try to confuse things, Charlie. Answer my question. Why are you talking to me if you don't believe in me? Goldie, tell that ghost to go away. <laughs> How did it go today, Connie? Oh, he was around. I could hear him. What did he want? The usual. Be loved, to be wanted. I told him no more of that. You had a conversation with him? Not much of a one. You haven't stopped believing. Have you stopped, Alice? I think so. You haven't. If you'd stopped, you wouldn't say, I think so. You'd know. Oh, Connie, how can I know? Mrs. Emery... What is it, Dorothea? Do you want Cleocon to in your room tonight or what? Nothing. Not anything? Not a thing. Oh, well, all right. Um, I had it all ready, but... Uh... That ought to show him, don't you think, Connie? Alice. It's Charles. It's Charles, Alice. What delicious surprise do you have for me tonight? Orange crush? Pomegranate juice? Not a blessed thing, Charles. Ah, you spoke. I didn't mean to. But you did. How beautiful to hear your voice. Oh, don't tell me that old malarkey, Charles. Malarkey? I never thought I'd hear my wife use a word like that. I'm not your wife. I'm your widow. And I'm using a lot of words I never used before. Alice, say you love me still. I can't make the trip unless you love me. I loved you for 35 years. Alice, I'm facing eternity. What's 35 years? Maybe not much there where you are. But it's a long time here. Now I'm going to turn off the light and go to sleep. I was talking to him before I could stop myself. It was the same with me. But he couldn't complete the trip because I wouldn't say I loved him. Same here. And I really don't think I do love him, Connie. 
I think I just got into the habit. Me too. What does he want to hang around for? I can't imagine. Must be so beautiful there where he is. Why should he want to come here? He says it's very peaceful there. Sounds heavenly. Not much like here. Alice. That's why he keeps coming back. He can't stand the peacefulness. He isn't having any fun. I bet you're right. No worries, no troubles, no arguments, no <laughs> problems. He can't stand it. That's the way he was when he was here. That's why he took up with me. Why else would he want to have a clandestine affair in the afternoon with a middle-aged school teacher when he had a wonderful wife like you? He was bored. He wanted a little excitement. He still wants it. Funny. I always thought people changed when they left this terrible world. I guess they don't. I hope I change. I'd hate to go on the same way for, for eternity. Being petty and jealous and suspicious. Oh, no. Well, how can it be so peaceful there if everyone's the same as they were here? Maybe. Maybe the others don't stay the same. Maybe they accept all that eternal peace and enjoy it. In the meantime, Connie... While we're still here, we have a problem that must be dealt with. Let's face it, neither of us has stopped believing in Charles completely. Alice, I don't know if I'll ever be able to stop completely. Maybe there'll always be some little corner of my mind that goes on believing that Charlie is here. It's the same with me. And as long as we both have that last little shred of belief, he will be here. Wandering around the house making bleating noises. But we won't answer it. We've got to be strong. Use firm measures. Like what? Like... Like rejecting him utterly. How do we do that? I have two rooms in the front of the house. Two big rooms with a big bath between. Would you consider taking one of them? Why, I... That would be... What I call rejecting him utterly, he'd never try to visit one of us if the other one was there. Could I bring Goldie? Of course you can bring Goldie. I'll get a canary, too, of the opposite sex. You'll hear some real singing then, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's skip dessert. Let's go upstairs now and look at the room, and you can decide what furniture you want to keep and which you want to get rid of. It's all terribly exciting. Oh, Alice, I don't want to be dead for a long time. <laughs> There. The desk between the windows and the chair here. We'll take out the love seat. And that'll leave room for the bed. What do you think, Connie? I think it's perfect. Now, what color do you want the walls painted? Uh, blue. Blue? Really? <laughs> I'd have thought with your dark hair you'd have wanted pink or yellow. Blue's such a nice background for Goldie. I'll tell you a secret, Alice. My hair is dyed this color. Alice? Alice? Listen to him. He sounds miserable. I expect he is. You really dye your hair, Connie? Do it myself. Want me to? I'll show you how. I wonder why I ever let myself go gray. You'd look lovely. Sort of a pale ash blonde. Pale ash blonde. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Connie. Connie. Where are you, my darling? Poor old thing. Don't you give in. Oh, I won't. I won't. Be strong. Oh, I will. I swear. Connie. Now, you said blue for the walls. Now, what shade of blue? Aquamarine, turquoise, robin's egg? Turquoise. Good. And we'll put white crisscross curtains at the windows. With turquoise tiebacks. You're right. And we get a turquoise and white spread for the bed. Beautiful. Uh, could I possibly have a white rug? A white shag rug. Why not? Alice. Connie. Somebody. Do you mean to sit there and tell me you didn't even take one peek at your new room? I wanted to wait till you got home from community chess. Well, right after dinner, we'll look at it together. What if the color is wrong? The painter showed me a sample. Pure turquoise. <laughs> we'll eat fast. I can't wait to see it. Dorothy had the bed moved in. Oh, Connie. 
I hope we'll get along as well as we've been getting along. After you move in. We will. We will. And Charlie will go back there and settle down. He'll be much better off. He'll thank us. If I know Charles, he won't. <laughs> well, if you don't know him, I don't know who does. Unless it's you. You know, you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> Connie, I had a thought. What if I went to the community chest in the morning instead of the afternoon? That way, when you get through school, we could do things like... Like go to the movies. Oh, Atlas, for fun! And you know what else? Weekends, we could take a train into the city and see a play. Or a concert. Or go to a museum. Oh, Alice! All those things I've been wanting to do, only I didn't want to do them alone. And you know what else? You mean there's more? Well, you had that two months off in the summer. We could go to Europe. Europe? I'll pay, of course. Now, don't argue. I'm your rich friend, so I'll pay. Alice, say it again. We're doing the right thing by Charlie, aren't we? Charles must stop being a ghost and settle down. And be happy. He will be happy, won't he? Charles will be happy there in whatever way they are happy there. Just as we will be happy here. I dare say the ways are different, but to each his own. Isn't that the expression? Oh, Alice, you do have a way of making everything sound simple. It is simple. If you stare the facts in the face and don't waver. I hope we're not being selfish. We're being realistic, that's all. Sometimes realistic and selfish look like the same thing, but they're not. Finished your coffee? Uh-huh. <laughs> then guess what we're going to do? Go look at my new room. Yes, only wait a minute. Dorothea! I simply can't wait to see it. Yes, Mrs. Emery. You know that case of French wine I ordered? Did it come? The one with the picture of the chateau on the label. It came last week. Well, will you uncork a bottle and bring it upstairs to my suite? To our suite? Oh, Alice. And two glasses? Yes, Mrs. Emery. Connie. You and I are going to drink to a brand new life. Three new lives. Yours, mine, and his. Come along. Come in, Dorothea. Oh, good. The wine's arrived. Just set it down here, Dorothea. Yes, ma'am. Dorothy and Miss Lawrence and I have decided to go to Europe for two months this summer. Oh. So you'll have a good long vacation instead of your usual two weeks. Full salary, of course. You're free to go where you like, or, or you can stay here. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Emery. Uh, I don't know where I'd go exactly. Well, suit yourself. Pour the wine, Connie. Will uh, that be all for this evening? That'll be all. Oh, then I'll say good night to you both. <laughs> good night. Sleep well, Dorothea. Thank you. Two whole months. They'll be gone two whole months. What'll I do with myself? Dorothea? Where would I go? Dorothea? What would I do if I stayed here in an empty house? Dorothea. Can't you hear me? I'd be all by myself. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. If there were just somebody... There he is. There he is. If you'd only listen. Somebody like... Like him. There is me, Dorothea. Oh, Dorothea, hear me. But he's gone. Believe in me. Never to return. Love me. Want me. And I loved him so. Dorothea, listen. And I still do. Oh, I love him still. Dorothea, look at me. Why, Mr. Henry. I thought you'd never notice. Have you, have you been here long? Not too long. I'm so surprised. I thought 
Well, I'd never see you again. Ever. Well, now you do. It's like a, a miracle had been performed. A lot of good hard work is more like it. I've never forgotten you. Really? I... Well, I know it was just that one weekend when Mrs. Emery went to her 25th college reunion, but I've never forgotten. That, that was quite some time ago. I was younger then, of course. You haven't changed, Dorothea. Not an iota. Oh? Still fresh, plump, and, and adorable. Oh, you mean that? I've never met anything so much in my life or since. Dorothea, could you love me? Oh, but I, I do love you, Mr. Emery. You do? I've never loved anyone else. Not since that weekend. You came up to my room on the third floor, don't you remember? That tiny little room. Yes, I do remember. Oh. <laughs> um. You're going to be around for a while? For a long while, Dorothea. Practically indefinitely. Will you be here this summer? This summer? And this fall, and all next winter and next year. For as long as you want me, Dorothea. Oh. Come on. Let's go up to the third floor. Mr. Emery, could I ask you something first? Anything, Dorothea. Anything. Uh, do you mind if I call you Chuck? Of course I don't mind. <laughs> Then, come on, Chuck. Follow me. I'm right behind you, Dottie. Right behind you. So, Charles continues his mad pursuit of life after death. And I, for one, wish him the best of luck. And the best of luck to Connie and Alice with their new hairdos and their new pants suits. Good luck to them all. Good luck to all of us. It's what we need the most. I'll be back shortly. I hope you enjoyed our little ghost story. It wasn't meant to be taken too seriously. His life isn't meant to be taken too seriously. Or, for that matter, death. Don't you agree? Our cast included Beatrice Strait, Paula Truman, Joan Loring, and John Barragray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. And now, Prometheus... Oh, firebringer, give our friend a sign. A sign, oh, firebringer, a sign. Oh, what's the ledger? It's on fire. Oh. Drop it, oh. Johnson, drop it. Oh. Uh, fear not, fear not. We are all safe. None of us has transgressed. I now call upon Prometheus for another sign. A sign directly for me. Watch now, Casey. Watch. What do you see, Casey? The man's a sheet of flame. He, he should be burned alive. But he'll emerge unharmed when the flames die down. It's a miracle, Casey. It's impressive. But I don't believe in miracles. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>